Good morning, guys. It's Sunday, about 6, 6.30 in the morning. I just got done driving three and a half hours. I am now at mom and dad's shop, Mountaineer Taxidermy. Good morning. Seems like we're starting a lot of these this way. We've been crazy, crazy, crazy busy, guys, and that's that's why we haven't been posting uh, that regularly, and why I haven't been getting you guys as much as we wanted to, um, because being in the taxidermy industry, right after deer season is a pretty busy time for us. And of course, we have a lot of a lot of stuff in the freezer. We actually just got another freezer here, and the thing is full already one two three four five six seven and that's down here there's actually one more at the house we have a lot of freezers which is probably due to the fact that you guys are really good at what you do which happens to be getting deer and coyote bear moose turkey all the stuff that you guys hunt so let's get to it Look who's out of bed. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Deer season is finally concluded. Back in the shop, back to doing things. If it's that time of year for you and you've been deer hunting and you got yourself one and thought maybe that we do uh, just, this is how I do a horn plaque. Um, you know, put the antlers on a plaque and set it up so that you can have it do it yourself fairly easy to do there's a million different ways of doing these it's not really important how you do it as long as you don't break skull cap i suppose taxidermy wise we thought we'd do just a little quickie and show kind of fast how we go about doing it okay when you caped your head off don't worry about the nose being gone here we're not over here right now. When it comes time to saw your antlers off from your deer's skull, I try and be about halfway between the antler burr and the eye socket. So I set the saw in here like this, and especially for, for mounting wise, also square up this way and saw straight down through. And you can see the cuts you wanna make. I also leave a little bit in the back here, part of the skull to hold the two skull plates together and it gives it a little more strength. If you've got a big record book deer, a big giant, um, leave, leave plenty on there. Leave plenty of material, hold things together. Once you've squared, cut down through, then I'll tip the head up and I'll cut down through the other way, back in from the skull top just a little bit so that it's like that. That way it'll sit right inside there. Your taxidermist will love it if you cut it that way. And later on, he can grind the bottoms and then adjust where the antlers go to fit inside of it. But as long as you leave quite a bit around it to hold it and keep the spread from pinching in some, especially on a big one where you're trying to dry it like it's a record book kind of deer or something. But those are the cuts I like to make just to get it out of the skull. Also peel out the layer that's on the inside there where the, you knock your brain out and then peel out the layer on the inside of that so that the whole thing can dry nicely. The other thing, keep in mind that the ear holes on each side, that part of it, will have some fat and stuff in it. And if you leave that, Dermastee beetles will find that and start chewing on it in the summertime when the moisture gets them up. Once you've got it and you, you've got it ready to go like that, and I'm gonna be putting it on the wall, this cut that we make for here versus the cut you would make on the wall are apt to be a little bit different. Now, I kind of set this on it. You can have the rack like this, but it would probably look better on the plaque if it was tipped up. You can see the angle needs to be improved a little bit. And I'll look at the space in the bottom right here and then make that same amount of space on top and then cut it so it'll fit better against it. And then up to about here. It's about like that. And so what I'll do is I'll just take it and put it right on its side. You can take a hacksaw and cut down through it. Um, sometimes I use a sawzall and cut that off, get it close. Then I'll bring it over to my sander and I'll sand it t until the antler burrs sit stable and flat. So we'll go ahead and make those cuts. So this is pretty much what we're shooting for. I like to keep the same distance from each antler burr off, off the back and then cut it so it's about like, just about like that. And that'd be pretty good. I mean, it could even go a little more. You can adjust that to whatever you like. And I try and keep this not sticking up too high. It'll vary from rack to rack and how you do it. Make sure that there's clearance 
if you have a really big one and you've cut it cut it deep make sure that there's clearance on the back side so that you know if your antler beam came out here it won't hit against the wall or the plaque yep so when jimmy sees a video merry christmas now i'll drill a couple of holes I like to keep them far enough back so that it gets rid of the tilt. And I'll, I'll drill a little bit of a countersink on them. Now we've got the whole thing pretty much sawed the way we like it. So that takes care of that part. That's what you're doing. Okay, normally what I do is I set my skull right on top of a piece of uh, Texture 111, 3 8 plywood, uh, half inch you can get away with. It's a little thick, but um, I like at least like a quarter inch or three eighths inch piece of plywood. Something fairly rugged. What I'll do is I'll go right underneath the antler burr on each side and just make a mark. I'll also make a mark up at the top here and I'll put a little bit of a, a center line in it like so. And then I'll make another mark here with another center line so that I know kind of where the, where the skull is going to be setting here. And I usually go right by that seam in the center. And once I've got those marks, now I'll just kind of round it a little bit, just eyeball it. I'll just kind of swing my wrist a little bit and match it up some. I mean, if you want to make a pattern and go to the, the effort, you can. Don't have to. I like this to come out and then kind of round some. And I'll even just kind of trace what looks pretty close. I just eyeball it. Now that I've done so many of them, I can eyeball it, but and I'll leave a little bit of a little bit of room. If if like this corner has a little sharper than that one, I can add to it just a little bit. And then I'll take a jigsaw and cut it out. Uh, right here looks a little flat. We can add just a little bit to it. Bring that out and then in like so. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect because I can sand it and finish getting it good, but if you saw it out closer, the better. And uh, if I've got multiples, I'll I'll put an X on it and an X here. Then I know these two will go together and I'll do a whole bunch of them when I'm doing them. But, and then I'll take jigsaw and cut it out. Okay, now of course the closer you saw it out, the less sanding you gotta do, so get it fairly close. If you need to go through and take some of the bumps out and even it up, it's certainly easy to do. And uh, I also like to, to sand the edges just a little bit so it's rounded off and we'll take care of that. Doesn't have to be real perfect because it's going to be on the inside and most of it's going to be fairly covered up. I'll still go by my center line. I'll set my antlers. I'll try and keep just a little bit of space here in the back, center it left and right, then stand a screw up and go ahead and hook it. Now sheetrock and uh, sheetrock screws and antlers and pushing down in the middle can be a problem. So finish it up with a screwdriver. Don't over tighten it because it'll crush it and break it. And if it does, you'll have to put a block in underneath here and wedge it all up, drill multiple holes and get everything screwed down and straight again. Now once it's on there, I'll look at it, look at the back and everything and make sure that it's kind of centered and everything's pretty good and then go ahead and put the other screw in it. If you happen to have long, you need to screw long enough to go into the wood. If it ends up going through the wood, say you just have some longer screws and it comes through the back, just take a grinder and grind those off afterwards. So now we've got the base and this is going to hold it up. And what this allows us to do is screw through the plaque and into this and it holds it without breaking it or cracking it. And you can come through from the backside and hide everything. That's the idea behind it. Keeping the distance here to here, even on each side so that it doesn't set a little crooked higher or lower in each way. Okay. So we'll grind off this stuff on the back here. Now, after I've ground the back off, I go through one more time and make sure that it's still tight. They can loosen, the vibration of grinding can loosen them just a little bit. Tight and snug so it won't turn, but not too tight to break it. Then we'll take a regular T50 staple, 
I keep the stapler up a little bit and I drive the staples inside the wood a little bit and this gives the plaster something to hook to and it helps it like a piece of rebar and concrete it'll help hold things. I've got some ordinary industrial plaster. Um, we buy ours from Mile Supply. Thanks Mile Supply down in Barrie. I buy it from them. Uh, the granite industry uses it quite a bit to hold up blocks. It's just ordinary plaster, uh, put water in it and heat it up. Um, most of the time it takes about the amount that you would use in powder to fill the same size volume of what you're trying to do. It's usually pretty darn close to that. So whatever you have for powder, um, just go ahead and put it in. If you mix it watery, of course, it'll, it'll be soupier and you won't get quite the volume out of it. I just dump in some water and stir it around. Got an old butter knife. That usually works pretty good. I'm going to mix it up just a, just a tad more. Yeah, if you get a little too much water, you can add some more plaster to it so you get the consistent you're lo consistency you're looking for. If it's your first time, mix it a little bit watery because it'll take a little longer to kick and it'll give you a little more time to adjust it all and get it just right. Now we'll take it and just push it right inside of it. If you have a light bowl, it'll want to move around every time you scoop it. Now what I'll do is push it in underneath it and kind of fill in the hole some. It doesn't have to go completely inside of it, but fill it in some. And use the bottom curve of the wood to help you smooth it out. And basically what we're going to do is just fill in and smooth and round the whole thing out nice and careful. You can do successive layers if you need to. The trick is to keep it as smooth as possible and as close to the original shape as you want it so it saves sanding and it saves all that extra work. The closer you get it originally, the better it'll be. It may want to be a little mushy at first, but as it starts to kick, it'll get closer. This is the part probably that takes the most practice, but it's not real hard. If you get it wrong, before it gets real hard, just bust it, take it out, and do it again. You can practice this some. And then just kind of blend it. And what we'll do is cover the whole works here. If you get a little bit on the antlers before it gets real hard, just brush it off. Take a wire brush, you can knock it off or whatever. Words you may say, oh, this was really hard, Rod. Well, I just make it, might make it look easy because I've done it a million times, but truthfully, it's not all that hard. It's fairly easy to do. And you can add layers of plaster to plaster and it usually sticks really good. If you are going to have to add another layer of it, you can leave it a little rough and the plaster will stick better to rough plaster. So we're getting there, just about got it now. Once you get it pretty darn close so that it's starting to look pretty even and, and pretty nice, I'll wet my finger down, get a little water on your finger, and then just rub it and smooth and round it out. Go in different directions, almost like, you know, when you do concrete, right? And when you get done, it's pretty darn close to what it needs. If I need just a little tiny bit, I'll put some in there with my fingers and then smooth that part out and try and get all the bumps and the wrinkles out of it as much as you can. And it takes about probably, I don't know, we're at four or five minutes here maybe or three minutes. And it's already starting to get hard. Try to keep the bumps nice and smooth around here because when we put our, our cloth over the top of it we don't want any of them bumps showing and that's pretty darn close right there that is not too bad now that we've got the plaster and it's set up it'll take a while to get really really hard but this is fine it's already ready to operate i'll take a little wire brush and i'll clean up the antler burrs around the bottom nice and careful and i have a rasp and it, anywhere it needs smoothing out i'll smooth it out this one's pretty darn good. Everything's pretty even. You don't want like a sheetrock screw bump sticking up or anything like that. I even have a few of these old rasps that were grooved and this works pretty good just for taking out some of the high spots and leveling things up just a little bit if it needs it. And anywhere it just might need to come, come around just a little bit better. Okay, now we're ready to cover it with material. Okay, now Jimmy traditionally has Kelly Green. That's what we've got here. 
So I'll take my horns and I'll set it right on top of the material that I want to use. You can buy like one foot squares like at uh, uh, Joanne's Fabrics or something like that. And then what I'm going to want to do is have about two and a half inches of material all the way around the entire thing. So I'm going to trim it right down here about two and a half, three inches around for extra material to work with. Now that I've got my material, what I'm going to do is center it right over the entire thing and I also want to center it front to back so that I have enough material to start in the middle and come down to the middle and fold around about the same amount on each side just like so. Once I've got it down and around, I'll take my T50 stapler and I'll just anchor the middle. Then I'll pull it up on the bottom and get it tight and I'll anchor the bottom like so. Now I'll go to my scissors and I'll come right at the antler burr. I'll go slow and I'll come right to the base of the antler burr, nice and gentle. I'll just make a cut straight in. Um, if it comes down over in this direction, it's fine, or straight in here, that's fine too. As long as I come so that this is solid here, and I bring it over and I pull it towards it, and I don't go too deep. I don't, I don't want to cut too far down in. I want to go just enough and leave just a little tiny bit extra. Now, I'll take it and bend it right around, get this out of the way. I'll bend it right around like so, just like that. And then I'll pull all this material down flat and anchor it all the way around. And then gently just tap them snug. If you need to trim a little bit here, you can. Now I'll bring the back side around and down, but I'm gonna have to trim some. There's just enough material there, so I gotta take some out. So I'll just trim a little tiny, like a half a penny. Just take out small, small amounts. Do not take out too much. Just like a half a penny, in and around and down, especially on a small antler beam like this. Tuck it under, then pull this over and kind of smooth it out and stay high back in here and anchor it right here. Now I'll trim that section staying behind the antler burr and the beam right to the top like so. Then I can pull on it a little bit more on the side. I can pull on it and then anchor it one more time. And then we'll come around the rest of the way. All this doesn't have to be real perfect because this is all gonna be covered. That one there could probably go. It's not a mountain name. Anymore. And if you need, if you get it wrong or it's a little crooked, just go ahead and pull those staples out and readjust. So now we've basically done half of it. And we have a little bit of a wrinkle, but when we get this side and we pull this one, that'll straighten right out and be nice and smooth and it'll be good to go. Now we're basically gonna do the same thing again. Okay. You can tell that I've got some extra material that's gonna need to go. So again, just a little small, small, round amount. You can always cut more, you can't put any back. That way it comes right around and anchors like that and looks good. So I'll start here and I'll just pull and hold and pull and hold and pull and hold and come right around like so. And I can see that's all gonna work real good right there. So I can anchor that. And everything's nice and smooth. Now I can trim. Stay high, like so. One last anchor right there. Now we'll come in the top, same thing. Just a little small, small amount.
just a little bit. And again, come right around. And now pull it down and tight. Anchor it. And then pull those down. Then trim the back. And there we have it. Then, clear off the bench. We're now ready for the plaque. Your taxidermy supply companies, uh, chain stores, anything like that, they sell. Uh, I usually use these 8x10 uh, size shield type plaques. I drill two holes just right in the center, half an inch apart or so. I put a hanger in the back. I just took a piece of tin and cut it into a hanger, took a, a speed bit. I have a regular decent sized speed bit and uh, I broke the tip off it so I ground a new tip so that the tip wouldn't go very deep and I just cut down into it and made myself a little relief so the screw can go up inside there and I took some uh, little short tacks, nailed them in the corners of the tin. I cover it with tape to make sure that the tin doesn't scratch somebody's leather seats or their wall or their table if they sat it down because sometimes it can be a little sharp edge here but you can put any kind of hanger on it, it's up to you, there's tons of them, there's tons of factory ones ready to go, whatever you want to do. And uh, once you've got your two holes in it and you've got your plaque and it's pretty much ready to go, now it's a case of hooking the antlers to it. When it comes to picking a screw, I like a screw that's going to go through the plaque and then through the half inch or three eighths inch uh, wood that I have here. But I don't want it to be so long that it starts pushing on the skull plate itself and breaking the whole system apart. So I'll take the, the, the plaque and I like to use the edge of my bench. Let's line the camera up here because that would be important too. We'll line the camera right up with the bench and then we can see how the plaque would be, on, how it's going to hang on the wall. See how I can square it up right there? And that makes sense. Now I'll take this and I'll set it right on top of it and I'll center it. If there's going to be a little brass tag or you're going to write something in the bottom, um, you can orient it a little more towards the top and give yourself room for that. Or if you put it right in the middle, all of Jimmy's seem to go right in the middle. That's the way he likes his. First, I center it side to side and get it in the middle that way. And it's very important that that it be centered on the plaque, the skull. The antlers just do what they do. That part really is, sometimes I'll cheat. If a rat grows out of the deer's head a little crooked to one side, I might cheat it and make it look a little bit better like that, just a whisker, but you can't really. You have to go by the skull plate. So I square up the two antler burrs, I center it side to side like so, and then get the, the desired height frontwards and backwards that we need and we can go up just a smidge. And I'll set it exactly where I want it to be. Now the trick is to get this screw to go up through the back side and keep everything the way it is. So what I'll do is just slide it out nice and careful. Keeping it centered and not moving the skull, I'll bring it right out and now poke the screw up through the hole that I made, my pre-drilled hole. And it has, the screw has to be able to slip and slide through the hole. You don't want it too big, but you don't want it too small. I'll take it and I'll push up until it hits this and then hold the screw exactly together with that and flip it over and don't move. I'll get that right where I want it. And when I've got it exactly where I want it, I'll tap it just to get started so that I know it's in there and it's good to go. And then I'll tighten it up. Now I don't want it tight tight. I want it just, just barely loose so that I can turn it and I'll bring it back up again and double check that my centering is correct and it didn't, I didn't screw it up somehow and I've got it pretty darn good. So now I'll finish tightening it up a little bit more and again not super tight just enough so it's just short of being real tight but enough so that it kind of wants to stay. Now I'll get my left and right so it's perfect. It'll be like a spin to it. So I want to make sure, and I'll go back and set it all up again, and I'll make sure it's going to hang exactly straight. Anything with a lot of weight on one side, especially half racks like this, sometimes the hanger in the back here has to be towards the, the center of gravity more for it to hang straight. If there's a lot of weight on one side of your horn plaque, it'll want to turn. So you may have to move your, your, your back hanger in the direction of where the weight's going to be sometimes. So if I know it's a half racker, I'll set my hanger a little off center to the weight and that'll help it hang straight. 
When I know everything's good and square and everything's just the way I like it, now I'll put my second screw in. Now with the holes being a quarter inch and then the screws being you know eighth inch or so, it still gives me a little tiny bit of leeway and I can still budge it just a little bit without hurting it. I can still crank it a little left or right if I need to. Then I'll hang it up on the wall and see how it looks and how centered everything is. Now you always want to hang it up and see how it's going to look and test it and see how it's going to hang. I like to have that centered so first I set the plaque on the wall straight. Now I'm looking to see if this is level across here and if the antlers are hanging the way they should. And that's pretty darn close right there. When using a piece of leather to cover, try and pick a spot where it's fairly thin. And I like leather that's a little stretchy. One of the reasons that the uh, one of the reasons that the felt works so good is because it's stretchy and it goes around corners well. If you have a lot of sharp corners or say you have two sharper corners in, in these areas here, getting the leather to go around a corner is a bit of a problem. You know, getting it to bend and stretch properly on a corner. So sometimes underneath, I'll make a cut in my extra material back towards the corner and it allows the leather to go by itself just a little bit. Not enough so you can see it, but I'll cut the back side where you're trying to crinkle the leather up. Same thing with this, about two inches around the outside, two and a half, three inches around the outside in your piece of leather. And make sure also too that there's no real flaws in the leather once you straighten it out in the center part here. The leather often has quite a few flaws in it so where somebody did some grinding, uh, where it's been brushed on something or something like that. Look out for that. Not a big deal. So pretty much that's how it's done. Not all that hard. It's just taxidermy. It's fun. It's something to do after deer season. It's pretty easy to do. Don't be scared. Go for it. It's not hard to do at all. And there's a million actual different ways of doing it. This has been what works for me. I get like results right off the bat. It's on the wall looking good in, you know, usually less than an hour. Um, maybe an hour and a half if you didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> so pay no attention, go for it. Pretty easy to do and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And if it's helpful, well, let us know and we'll keep the videos coming. Happy deer season and happy holidays. Take care, bye. I think the kind of the cool thing about using using this deer, this is a deer that was shot about a week ago by Coco Puff. He's a guy that hunts with us. Uh, Jimmy's like our best friend. He's one of the nicest guys you ever met. And the story behind that deer was actually it was actually really good, nerve wracking. It was a muzzleloader buck, and he was completely wound up. Um, if you guys are interested and you want to see the video and kind of see him go from the woods and now to the wall, if you want to see that uh, kind of unfold, we'll link it uh, right here, and we'll, it'll also be in the description below. But um, um, you know guys uh, really simple you can do it you can do all this stuff nothing's difficult um, feel free to check out the rest of the channel if you got nothing going on uh, like subscribe if you aren't already and we will see you in the next video bye